Okay, everybody. So, if you go to, if you Google and you go to the nationalarchives.com research JFK, you'll see here's the 2017 release. Search the JFK database. So, if you Google it, it'll take you right there. It's www.archives.gov/research/jfk. Let's go to 2017. So here they are. Here are the files. Brent Scowcroft. So here's the agencies formally withheld in part, in part. Can you search? Can you? Memorandum. So I don't know how many are in here. Thousands, I guess. So it tells you how to re to access them, to view or download a release file, follow the file number. You can also download the full spreadsheet with metadata with all the documents. The files are sorted by the NARA release date. Previous to holding status, formally withheld in part, formally held in full. So we can see here. So. There's a lot in there. There's the director of the FBI. Let's just open one at random, really. So here we have some kind of, uh, they're doing some kind of background check on title of case Lee Harvey Oswald, report made by William S. Brown. All information contained here in his unclassified date, 7393. That's when Bill Clinton probably started this process of uh, bringing these files to light. Now, Alex Jones was talking about download the zip file. So you can download these things in bulk if you want. I wish you could search them. Uh, let's say uh, JFK uh, Surgeon General Report. Didn't take me where I wanted to go. So they're saying that the assassination records have been have been released. I'm just kind of jumping through here randomly. Here is a segregated CIA segregated collection. These were released in part. Okay, here's something interesting. Sylvia Duran's previous statements visit to the Cuban console in part. As we view June 1st, let's just see what this is. So you can search this yourself. So this is where they've, they've been talking about Lee Harvey Oswald visiting the Cuban embassy in Mexico City and the, at that time the Soviet Union embassy in Mexico City. So there's been a lot of discussion on this. So this so here we go. 
happens. On November 23, 1963, one day after the assassination of President John F. Kennedy, the Central Intelligence Agency's Mexico City Station suggested to Mexican officials that they arrest Silvia Tirado de Duran. Note to the Mexican City Station asked that Silvia Tirado de Duran be held incommunicado until she told the Mexican officials everything she knew about Lee Harvey Oswald. The Mexican government arrested Silvia Tirado de Duran the next the same day. Captain Fernando Gutierrez Barrios, assistant director of the Federal Security Police, interrogated her at 6 p.m. that evening. So this, the notice here, it says, version of interrogation given to the Warren Commission by the Mexican government. And she, so, Ms. Duran said that she became a secretary of the council, Escobioya SQ, three months prior to the assassination of President John F. Kennedy due to the death of Maricam Arberia, she stated that in the late. Okay, so by the name of Lee Harvey, this is interesting wording. She stated that in the late September, early October 1963, a North American by the name of Lee Harvey Oswald appeared at the Cuban consulate and applied for an transit visa to Russia by way of Cuba. Now that's interesting. So this, she's stating that. Late September, early October 1963, President Kennedy is assassinated in November of 1963. She stated that in late September, early October, a North American by the name of Lee Harvey Oswald appeared at the Cuban consulate and applied for an entrance and transit visa to Russia by way of Cuba. Durant stated that, the, that Oswald presented evidence that he had been in Russia for three years, that he was married to a Russian woman, and also that he was a leader in New Orleans called Fair Play for Cuba. This is what they've been talking about. Alex Jones and um, Tucker Carlson and a lot of conservatives are talking about. Sylvia Duran stated that Oswald stressed that his visa application should be accepted as he was a friend of the Cuban Revolution. Sylvia Duran stated that there in compliance with her duties she had Oswald fill out the appropriate application. Oswald then left and returned in the afternoon with the necessary photographs. Ms. Duran stated that at, the time exceed, at that time, exceeding her duties, she telephoned the Russian consul because of her interest in facilitating the handling of the Russian visa for Lee Harvey Oswald. The Russian embassy told Duran that there would be a delay of approximately four months of processing the case, which annoyed Lee Harvey Oswald since, according to his statements, he was in a great hurry to obtain, to obtain a visa to travel to Russia. He insisted on his right to obtain a visa in view of his background and activities on behalf of the Cuban movement. When Oswald understood that it was not possible to give him a Cuban visa without previously attaining a Russian visa, he became extremely angry. At this point, Ms. Duran stated she had called Consul, Consul Ascu, who at that time was in his private office accompanied by his upcoming replacement, Alfredo Melrabal. Mr. Ascu came out of his office and argued with Oswald in English. Mr. Rand stated that Mr. Askew told Os Oswald that a person like him instead of told Oswald that a person like him instead of aiding the Cuban Revol Revolution did it harm. Uh, Oswald at that point stated that he had two reasons for requesting his visa with such urgency. One, that his Mexican permit expired soon and two, that he needed to reach Russian to reach to reach Russian soon. I don't know, Russian must rush up. Sylvia Durant stated that in spite of the argument, she gave Oswald a piece of a, misspelled, a paper with her name and counseled business phone number. Ms. Durant that stated that she also initiated the handling of his visa application by sending it to a Cuban Ministry of Foreign Relations from which a reply was received in a normal manner. Sure seems like everyone was sure rolling out a lot of I mean, one guy, he's saying, hey, you're hurting the Mexican Revolution, this Mr. Askew, and Sylvia Duran is doing, every, she's bending over backwards to get this guy to Russia. Oh, she does not require, okay, so let's go on. Oswald did not speak any Spanish. 
Finally, she stated that upon seeing Lee Harvey's photograph in the newspaper, she immediately recognized and identified as being the same person that she remembered as Lee Harvey Oswald. At the time of Sylvia Duran's detainment, her pertinent statements about Lee Harvey Oswald were written by the Mexican government given to Mr. Duran to read. Now here we have st st sections. I guess this section here might be redacted. I don't know. What happened to it? Where did it go? This is section 1E they're asking about. Sections transmittal, maybe that's transmittal. What happened to it? Where did it go? So they're wanting to know something at 1E Ibid. What happened to it? Where did it go? I don't, I haven't found that. They're asking about, is it the permit? Are they asking about the permit? Where did it go? I don't know. Cable from Mexico City Station Headquarters, November 27, 963. Cable from Mexico City Headquarters. Mexican officials told Sylvia Duran that they were detaining her to protect her. Subsequently, about her second detainment, Duran stated, They were very rough this time. They repeated the same questions, but they were more, How do you say evil? And they wanted to know exactly what I have done in Cuba. The people that I met there, everything. They were asking me questions about all the people that were working in the embassy at this time. So this is the where we're going to lead into um, uh, Johnson thinking that the, the Cubans were involved. They were asking my, me questions about all the people that worked in the embassy at this time. I wanted to go to the bathroom and they wouldn't let me and it was longer because it was 10 a.m. According to the Mexican officials that detained Duran, what happened to this one, see? They're looking for this cable. According to the Mexican officials that detained Duran a second time, she remembered Oswald Perkins and denied he wore glasses. Otherwise, there's no addition to her story. Interesting. So what, what's, what's this glasses from? I, I don't know. And they're wanting to know what happened to this cable. So they're investigating Sylvia Duran. So we know Sylvia Duran was at this consulate. Let's go on down through this. So I think this is a So this is Oswald, you know, he was trying to get into Russia. Interesting. Anyway, that's just a let's go back out. So we've learned about Sylvia Duran a little bit. What we're really looking for in here is let's just go to the last. Okay, here we go. Formally held in full. This is interesting. Reports views on domestic racial situation and the new politics convention. Views on black militant situation in Chicago. Martin Luther King. Interesting. So we have discussions of Martin Luther King. This is probably when King was assassinated. Let's go back one. Investigation in a report on suspicious actions of subject originally described as resembling suspected assassin of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So this is in the Kennedy archives. This is James Earl Ray. He was the assassin of Dr. Martin Luther King. This was held before. Membo, condemnation of CIA by Dr. Nels F.S. Fair, prominent theologian. What is this? Is this something about Martin Luther King? This may this was released, but maybe it was supposed to be released in ninety two. Maybe it's only now come out. So this this here would be redactions. So this must be
So here we have this. This he was from Worcester, Ohio. Worcester, Ohio College. Southern Baptist Convention directors of the state student departments. During an address at the conference, the Reverend Dr. Nels F. S. Fair, prominent theologian, publicist, and publicist of Andover Newton Theological Seminary, now associated with the Worcester Ohio College, expressed his concern with the growing power of the CIA in the U.S. As an example, he said that the agency was, quote, directly responsible, end quote, for the assassinations of Martin Luther King and Senator Robert Kennedy and had been involved in the death of President John F. Kennedy. So here we're seeing, this is somewhere in 1969, people are now, you know, they're concerned that something's going on, that there's, there's the deep state, as we call it, in 2017, the hidden hand is involved in this. So you have to remember in the 60s, as a child, I don't really remember President John F. Kennedy being assassinated. It was only three. I do remember Martin Luther King being assassinated, and I do remember Senator Robert F. Kennedy, Robert Kennedy being assassinated. I clearly remember the two of them being assassinated. That was a really terrible time. The 60s were very, very uh, volatile uh, time period. You know, you had Kennedy killed, and President Kennedy killed in 63, and, and then both Martin Luther King and Bobby Kennedy were assassinated, you know, later in the 1960s. So he's listed in who's who. Who's who we don't know much about anymore, but uh, for a long time you would have a, uh, a book. My parents had it. You'd buy it. And it was called Who's Who. And it's Who's Who in America. And you'd have all the prominent Americans. I don't know if that, maybe there's a website that exists, but for years they would, my parents would get this Who's Who, and he was in there. His remarks were not challenged by the Baptist Students Director. This information is for it being a possible interest. Apparently, Farr's remarks were not reported in the local St. Louis newspapers. So this is somebody, this is a theologian who's, who's espousing that he thinks the CIA is behind these assassinations. That's pretty fascinating. This is really fascinating. Uh, more about Martin Luther, Dr. King. Let's go back one. These are all blocked. Student agitation, anti-war activities in the United States. Interesting. This was, you know, the Kent State, the, all the agitations. These are in part. Diagram of names. Let's look at this. You know, all kinds of updates. It's blowing up here. Okay. Italy's wife. I don't know. This is some kind of diagram of people. Anyway, this is something I would, if I were you, I'd peruse it because this is kind of fascinating. I don't know how long I've been recording. I'm, I'm getting lost in this. Classified message. Let's look at this. I don't know why this is 1960. Frankfurt, 18 May 1960. It, it, this is just like a random cable I picked out here. State has revi revi viewed amended draft letters submitted by Munich Kangen. Feels no letter in any form should be sent by consulate to exiles as proposed. Basis turn down that sending letter exceeds original letter authority ambassador and sets undesirable precedent. We plan further discussion here but feeling change. So the, some of these are just random. They seem random. So you could probably do a mass search on this.
Anyway, so that's what we're seeing here. Somebody's plying. Place of birth, Paris, France. Okay, now this might be something really interesting. Let me show you what we've kind of stumbled on here. He might, this might be uh, the French, the famous French assassin. Let me see here. I'm pretty sure this is it. Lucien Canyon. Yes, this is, I'm sure it is. He's the French assassin. That's been, that we've heard for years. Lucien Kong. It's circulated for years about this that he was he may this may be the assassin, one of the potential assassins. Yeah, this is it. Now there have been discussions that he might have been involved. So, see here he was he was recruited by the Watergate burglars. He turned them down later. Both if I'd been involved, we would have done it right. So there's always been discussion. We there's always been um, around Lucien Conan, who's uh, French that he might have been one of the assassins. Now this is always speculation. So this must be his, uh, so in 1960 he was 41. He's missing his first joint right index and middle finger amputated. First joint right, in, so he's missing fingers. I don't know. That I don't sound like he'd be a great assassin with first joint right, index and middle finger amputated. So it must be his first joints of his right, index and middle finger were amputated. Interesting. So he's missing part of his right hand, his right fingers. And let's see, he is You will accept eleven thousand. Born in France, nineteen nineteen. Immigrated U.S. nineteen twenty five. So he's he's the famous Cold War spy. Yeah. France military, nineteen forty four. China military, nineteen forty five. Indochina. This is during the Indo when the French had Vietnam. He was in Germany, he was in Iran. Yeah. List of hobby. Hunting good, fishing good, free fall parachuting good, OSS trained. So he was applying for a job. So this is the, there's been discussion that he might have been an assassin. That, I mean, that's speculation, but this is very interesting that we're seeing his actual ap application. He is missing his fingers, he had an apodectomy, he had a hernia. He lived in McLean, Virginia. Luigi, his, his nickname would be Luigi here. Position commensurate with past training experience. Yeah, in other words, he's a spy. Now it's interesting where he was at during this first world, second world war. He was obviously France. He was in the military in 1944. He was with the OSS, so he was working for the United States. China. He was 1945 OSS. Indochina, Vietnam, military, political, 45, and 56 through 59. OSS. 
Germany Intelligence, 1946 to 1953. SSU and CIA. I think the SSU might be French. I'm not sure. Iran Intelligence, 1959-1961. Assignment ACIS. ACIS. SI. Interesting. So there was speculation that he might have been one of the assassins. There's always been a speculation that uh, Luigi uh, Cunyon was was on the actual bridge. Now Alex Jones just reported that the Surgeon General report that some were buried in here um, is says that Kennedy was shot from the front through the throat. So the, Zagru the Zabrutus film is actually coming true on that. Okay, so that's a brief overview of uh, the JFK assassination. I mean, you could spend a lot of time on that. And uh, okay.